The internet is absolutely wiling on this one, but I'm here to tell you that Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny might not be as bad as you think, or it might be so much worse. This is a very mixed movie, but we're gonna get to the bottom of it today. What's up, my dude? Your friendly neighborhood Tony here, and if you wanna keep up to speed on all the new big movies that are coming out in theaters and at home, make sure you subscribe. Now, as I do with all my reviews, I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about the movie, who's making it, what it's about, all that good stuff. Then we'll get into the pros and cons. And then finally, I'm gonna let you know who I think this movie is for if anyone. As far as a plot summary for this movie, real simple, in the Dial of Destiny, Indiana Jones races against time to retrieve a legendary artifact that can change the course of history. This is the first movie in the Indiana Jones franchise that is not being directed by Steven Spielberg and instead is being handled by James Mangold, who you might know from directing more recently Ford v Ferrari or Logan, which is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. He also did 310 to Yuma, which is a great western. He's a very talented director that has a wealth of experience in a number of different types of movies. Now, I should also probably let you know my experience with Indiana Jones as a franchise. Unlike probably a lot of guys my age, I did not grow up on Indiana Jones. I remember seeing the first three movies when I was a young kid, but really maybe once, and I didn't watch them again until I was in my late teens, maybe early 20s. Of course, I re-watched every single movie in the franchise on the run-up for this movie to kind of refresh my memory of everything and kind of put them all into place. So I do definitely like Indiana Jones a great deal, and I recognize that some of the original movies are some of the greatest action adventure films of all time, but I don't have nostalgia glasses on with this one. So hopefully that means I'm able to go into it with an unbiased perspective, as unbiased as anyone can be when we're talking about movies. Now, of course, this movie does star Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, a 70-year-old Indiana Jones being played by an 80-year-old Harrison Ford. In addition to that, you have Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is playing his goddaughter. She's a bit of a treasure hunter as well, although she's found herself in a lot of trouble and she's seeking out Harrison Ford at the beginning of the movie to help her settle some debts. Oddly enough, third billing in this movie is Antonio Banderas, even though he only has a couple minutes of screen time in the entire film, but we'll get into that a little more later. You have John Reese davies returning as Sala, Toby Jones as Basil Shaw, and then there's Mads Mikkelsen and Boyd Holbrook, who are the two main villain characters in the movie. So overall, a great cast. And now before we get into the pros and cons, I should say this is a movie that I can talk about for hours and still not cover everything I need to say about it. So I'm gonna try to limit my talking points in this review because I don't wanna go on for an hour. You don't wanna be here for that long. So let's hit some of my main pros and cons. For one, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford will never not be great as Indiana Jones. And you can really tell that this is one of the franchises that he has that he still really, truly, deeply cares about. And as such, he really devotes himself to this character and comes across as really authentic. You know, he's always had and he still has that charm and suaveness with a bit of goofiness mixed in, but in the coolest way possible. And in this movie in particular, we see a lot more vulnerability from him as he's getting on in years. There are scenes where he absolutely makes you feel for him. He tugs at your heartstrings, which is a big positive as regards his acting. But... I think maybe not so much when we get into how it works with the story. But again, we'll get into that when we get to the negatives. Another big positive that I think everybody is talking about is the opening sequence to this film. You've seen a bit of it in the trailers. It takes place in the 1940s during the Nazi occupation in Germany. And it's Indiana Jones, I think probably in his 40s, going on another adventure, trying to capture an artifact. And they use this de-aging technology to take Harrison Ford's face from being an 80-year-old face to what he looked like when he was in his 30s and 40s. And having the scene take place around the World War II time with Indiana Jones fighting Nazis is something that I think we all can love. There's just something so wonderfully nostalgic about that. It's really a great way to kick off the movie, although, again, not without its flaws. And it feels like that might be a thread here. There are some great bits, but not without their flaws. Another big pro is the music. John Williams is an absolute legend, and he never ceases to amaze with the way that he's able to elicit such powerful emotions with just a musical cue. And of course, yet again, he does it. Another really cool thing that I love about all of the Indiana Jones movies, and they do it again in this one, is the sets. The locations that they travel to throughout the movie. You know, it's a globe-trotting adventure film, and you get to see so many different cool towns and beautiful vistas and really cool tombs and all of that fun stuff that you know from the original films. And they do that yet again in this one. It's just fun to see all of these cool and unique locations. Also, I like in the Indiana Jones movies when they pair him up with a younger person, whether it's with Short Round in the Temple of Doom or with even Mutt, Shia LaBeouf in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and now with Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. There's something about balancing the gruffness and almost parental immaturity of Indiana Jones 
Jones with someone that is both dependent on him and kind of pushes his buttons a little bit. So I like that overall. But again, not without its faults. So yes, it's great to see Harrison Ford again. The production, the music, all of that is great in the movie. But let's get into some of the cons. And unfortunately, I do have quite a few. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by you. That's right. Thank you for being a sponsor of the channel. Now, you may be asking yourself, how in the world am I sponsoring this channel? Well, just by watching. If you're watching the video, I appreciate it. If you want to take it a step further, though, consider subscribing or at least click the little like button below the video. That helps out as well. Another thing you can do is use my Amazon affiliate link in the description box below. Real simple. If you plan on buying anything on Amazon today, if you click on that link, it doesn't cost you anything extra and it just gives me a little kickback. Lastly, if you want to be extra awesome and most impressive, consider joining as a channel member. For just a couple bucks a month, you get extra access to me directly. Again, I'll link to that in the description box below. So jump down there and check it out. But even without all that, I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. All right, let's get back to it. So as I mentioned, it was really cool to see Harrison Ford kind of stretching his acting muscles a little bit with these deeply emotional scenes where you feel bad for him. But I don't think I want that in an Indiana Jones movie, at least not in the way they do it here. The whole allure of Indiana Jones is this wild fantasy and escapism. He strikes a chord with people because he's fun and exciting and cool, even though he's kind of a nerd. He's often way over his head in situations, but somehow through luck and skill, he finds his way out of it. And in this movie, for a lot of it, he's just this sad, lonely, depressed old man that feels like he has nothing left to live for. I mean, that makes for a dramatic film, sure, but not so much for a film about an icon of escapism. Speaking of Harrison Ford, we talk about the opening sequence where we see the de-aged Harrison Ford. And despite how cool and great it was to see that throwback of a young Indiana Jones fighting Nazis, the de-aging technology that they use just isn't quite there. Whether it was in the way that his mouth was moving when he was talking or in the lifelessness in his eyes or the fact that you have an 80-year-old voice coming out of the face of a 40-year-old man. It's just wonky enough to be strange. And that kind of brings me to the CG elements of the movie. You know, one of the things that made the original Indiana Jones movies so fun and exciting is the use of all the practical effects and the real-life stunts that were going on on screen. We felt so connected and concerned for Indy and his friends because they were actually doing these things. When you see a character hanging off of a cliff, they're actually hanging off of something. When you see them get run over by a truck, they really did get run over by a truck. But here, it becomes this mess of these cartoon versions of humans on animated backdrops in a green screen world, and it just doesn't feel real. I feel like no matter how advanced technology becomes and no matter how advanced the CG elements become, there's always going to be something that we as humans can just notice. And that happens in this movie a ton. You know, we have movies like the John Wick franchise or Extraction 1 and 2, where you have real stunt performers doing real stunts, real fight scenes, real explosions, and they're just so much more visceral and authentic. And that is the soul of the Indiana Jones franchise. That is the core, the root of where it all came from. I just wish they would get back to that. Okay, moving on from Harrison Ford and moving on from the CG, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. Now, even though I'm gonna end up putting her character in the cons, I do like Phoebe Waller-Bridge a, a lot. I think she, as an actress, is really fun and charming, and she can really carry a movie or a TV show on her own. So I think she's got a lot of talent there. Honestly, I could even see her in some kind of Indiana Jones spin-off series or movie. But unfortunately, in this movie, they just didn't write her character very well. And she has a ton of potential too. There's a lot of room there for a really interesting character arc, but they just make her so unlikable from the very beginning. And no, it's not just because she's a female, okay guys? Relax with that nonsense. It's just that her character legitimately is kind of evil and they play it off like she's supposed to be fun. I can definitely see that they were kind of trying to make her character seem like Indiana Jones earlier on in the franchise, you know, a bit of a scoundrel. But even the OG Indiana Jones, Jones back in the day, he was still a moral character and she really isn't, at least not towards the first half of the film, which is when you're introduced to her and where you kind of develop your feelings about the character. There are moments where she gets innocent people killed and doesn't care at all. She actively takes advantage of an aging and depressed Indiana Jones, which is a character that we're made to feel for. And again, with writing the character, that's just that just feels like a fundamental mistake. How can you expect us to like someone when all you do for the first half of the movie is express how terrible she is? And again, this is something that is 
easy to fix. But at this point, I don't know if they can. Another character I want to touch on real briefly is Antonio Banderas. And as I mentioned before, he has like third billing in this movie, but has maybe a total of five minutes of screen time. And that's it. I don't know what that was all about, but I feel like they totally wasted him. I mean, you have Indiana Jones and Zorro on screen together and you just throw him away like he's a glorified extra. That is wild to me. I can't wrap my head around that. Aside from all my issues with the characters though, I also have a fundamental issue with the MacGuffin of this movie and the way it works. You know, as I'm sure you know, the movie revolves around the concept of time travel, right? That's the whole thing that's going on here. And without explaining or spoiling exactly how it all works, I can tell you that it doesn't work. The way that they explain the time travel in this movie literally cannot work. And I'm not saying that as a scientist, right? I don't know crap about science, especially when it comes to like multi dimensions and time travel and all that stuff. But just fundamentally, when they tell you how it happens, it just doesn't work. It's impossible. And if I can figure that out, anybody could figure that out. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm left with the question of, did we need this movie? And now, of course, I know we don't need any film, right? No film is necessary. But when I think about Indiana Jones's arc as a character, and I know a lot of people hate Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and my thoughts on that, I'll save for another video. But the way that movie ends, you have Indiana Jones going off and getting married. He has his son there. He, he finally gets a happy ending. And then here we are all these years later, and we cut back to him and he is lonely and depressed and basically doesn't want to live. And I won't spoil how the movie ends, but did we need that? Could, could we not have just let our hero ride off into the sunset and be happy? I feel like that's a big problem with a lot of what these movie studios are doing with these classic film series that we grew up loving a lot of us. You know, and we always want more, that's normal, but there needs to be a point where you just say enough is enough the character had a happy ending, we're done with it, and we're moving on. And I feel like maybe they should have done that before they made this movie. Now, of course, that's not to say it's a total waste. I did still enjoy myself watching it. There's still a lot that you can get out of it. But at the end of the day, I just think this is a movie that we didn't need, that they didn't need to make, and that a lot of people are not going to want. So, who is this movie for, if anyone? I think if you're an absolute diehard Indiana Jones fan, of course you have to see it. This is most likely going to be Harrison Ford's last hurrah as the character, and you gotta watch it. I think if you're not already a big fan, this isn't going to be the movie that brings you into the franchise at all. I would definitely recommend going back and watching the original trilogy, though. But for this one, maybe pass. For me, I'll have to watch it a couple more times to really get my thoughts in it. You know, there's a lot happening in this movie, and as I mentioned before, I could talk about it for hours and still not hit everything. But as I sit with it now, it is right there with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull as my least favorite Indiana Jones movie. But of course, these are just my thoughts, my opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, keep it respectful. If you guys want, I'll also do a ranking of all of the Indiana Jones movies, so let me know that in the comments. Otherwise, if you want to keep up to speed on all the new movies coming out in theaters and at home, make sure you subscribe. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Be good.